In the late 1960s, Sweden wanted to replace its aging fleet of tanks, many of which were designed before or during World War II. In addition to the main battle tank, Stridsvagen 103, the Swedish military needed a more mobile vehicle to support the infantry and act as a tank destroyer. The philosophy behind the IKV-91 was similar to the one of the American M18 Hellcat. It was so that when you were in a tank and an enemy tank was coming towards you to attack, you didn't necessarily have to deal with it yourself. That was the job of the tank destroyers. But for the tank destroyers to get to you quickly enough to destroy the enemy tank, they had to be mobile and fast. Also, they would use their mobility to quickly flank enemy tanks to penetrate their weaker side armor. That's also why the IKB-91 was lightly armored and therefore more mobile. With this idea in mind, they requested ideas. 14 different designs from 3 different companies were submitted. They narrowed their choices down to 3 designs and eventually Heglund got the deal and they went to work. The first prototype of the IKB-91 was completed in December 1969, with two more following in 1970. The prototypes used the drive crane, gearing and other components of the PBB-302 armored personnel carrier, which was also designed by Haglund. After extensive trials, Haglund was awarded a production contract in March 1972. The first pre-production vehicles were completed in 1974, and the full-scale production ran from 1975 until 1978, with a total of 212 vehicles built and put into service. Even though it was officially designated as infantry cannon vehicle, the IKV-91 was internationally classified as a light tank. They also considered offering the IKV-91 version with a 105mm gun to the sales market but in the end didn't do it. We're gonna talk about this version later.